The main character was lying in the hospital, he was in a coma, his girlfriend visited him every day, but as it turned out she was not faithful to him and while he was unconscious she was not alone in his room, she was with some man who molested her, and she was only stopped by the fact that they were in the hospital, he told her that they had nothing to fear because he had asked his friend Wang Chao to stand outside the door and in case someone came, he would warn them. But she said her boyfriend Yi Chen was still here, he told her even if that scum incapable woke up, what could he do, and he won't even know about us, besides today he dared me, so I just have to have fun with you right in front of him to ward off evil. But suddenly there was thunder and lightning struck the hospital building and at that moment Chen woke up, he surprisedly asked Yuan Hao, Lu Yushi, what are you doing here? He wondered, that's it, I was reborn, today is my first day since arriving in Jiangnan. He found that his girlfriend Lu Yushi has a lover Yuan Hao, when he demanded an explanation from them, Yuan Hao pushed him on the road and he was hit by a truck. Although the main character survived but was left disabled, his father went to Yuan's family to ask for an explanation and was eventually beaten to death. After hearing about this, the main character survived his father by a small margin. However, heaven forbid that he his soul was transported to the world of cultivation, where he perfected himself for 3000 years. During that time he reached the Mahayana stage and gained absolute domination in all corners of that world people called him immortal of the northern sky, but the former humiliation and harsh death of his father followed him unceasingly, storing in the main character's soul. And eventually it resulted in his failure to reach the disaster stage, his body perished and destiny was cut short. Chen said, never thought I would be reborn today, the day it all began. Hao walked up to Chen and said, you woke up just in time, now that you are disabled, I have to take care of your girlfriend myself, need you to understand what happens to those who are on my back. Chen thought, in my memory is the knowledge of a higher perfection technique, known as the canon of the great secret, to cure his disability I only need a small effort. Canon of the great mystery, draws in the true qi and provides a process of circulation in the body, this small effort was enough to allow me to reach the first stage of qi hardening. Now my shattered bones are like new. He got out of bed and exclaimed, minor leg injury is not even worth mentioning for Heavenly King Yi. Lu and Hao were shocked and they saw Chen get out of bed, after all he was disabled. Lu said to him, so you were okay, I bet you decided to conspire with the doctor thinking to get my sympathy. He slapped her in the face and answered her, Do you think I need sympathy from some girl? How couldn't watch silently as Chen slapped his new girlfriend and wanted to hit him, but Chen easily dodged his punch, he asked, Did you think well when you decided to attack me, and at this point he punched him in the stomach. How crouched in pain and called for help to his friend Wang Chao, he immediately ran into the room, Wu Chao is a big tall and very massive. How told him, I leave it to you, kill him. Lu asked how to take her to the doctor for she did not want her face to be scarred. Wang Chao went up to Chen and said he would regret being born into this world, but Chen gave him just one blow and Wang Chao flew away and hit the wall. Chen told him that no one had ever managed to snatch victory from the hands of Heavenly King Yi. After a while Chen left the hospital and thought in this life, I will not let anyone humiliate me and my loved ones, no one can look down on the immortal northern sky. Hao and Lu, I will take my time and make you pay for everything. However, in today's accident was another casualty, a girl named Chu Bing. To avoid colliding with me, she had to swerve her car and ended up hitting a roadblock, suffering severe injuries, she was rushed to the emergency room, but the doctors were powerless. Anyway, this happened because of me, and to put these events behind me. Have to visit her. Chen arrived at the hospital where Chu Bing was staying. At this time, Chu Bing's parents could not believe what had happened and nervously asked the doctors what condition their daughter was in. The doctor told her that their daughter's condition was highly unusual, the injuries she sustained in the accident were not fatal, 
but for some unknown reason all her internal organs had begun to fail and the results of various measuring instruments definitely said that she had not long to live and that they are obliged to save their daughter's life, and they are willing to pay any amount. The doctor answered them that he had been practicing medicine for decades and had managed to save many lives, according to the diagnosis, even a higher power could hardly save their daughter. Mother and father could not believe it, because their daughter is only twenty years old. But at that moment Chen walked down the hall and said that someone obviously underestimated the higher power. Mom recognized him and exclaimed, I remember you, it was you who ran out onto the road that caused my daughter to crash into the fence. Father asked in anger, so it was you, and you have the nerve to come here? Chen answered them, indeed, to some extent your daughter was in an accident because of me, so I came here to save her. But the doctor refused to believe him, he told him to get out of here. The doctor came up to his father and said, Mr. Chu, you should prepare for what's coming and not indulge in unrealistic hopes. But Chen answered him, I'm afraid to imagine how many lives have been brought to death by your incompetence as a doctor. Your daughter was born with a particular susceptibility to cold, until the age of ten every day at three o'clock in the morning all her heat inevitably shivered with cold, and after ten years the symptom subsided. Yet her condition still made itself felt, only with a frequency of every five days, am I right? Mom said surprisingly that this was true, she asked him how he knew this secret. Chen replied that it didn't matter now, the only question was whether his father was willing to let him in to his daughter to save her life. He put his hands on Chen's shoulders and said he agreed and he was totally counting on him. Chen walked into the room and said that he didn't like people standing and staring at him during treatment, he asked everyone to leave the room and told them to wait for him outside. Chen looked at Chu Bing and thought, it would be a pity if such a beautiful girl parted with her life. He opened her robe held out his hand and thought, just spare me the complaints later, I'm doing this to save you. As it turned out she didn't have an innate cold essence at all, someone used the frost parasite technique against her, the weaker the carrier body, the stronger the symptoms of frostbite. Chen began to pull out some liquid of bright purple color, after a while he managed to get all the liquid out and it took the form of no essence. Chen thought looks like the Chu family did something bad to someone powerful, to use this technique you need to be at least in the final stage of qi hardening. He closed his hand into a fist and destroyed this entity. Although the parasite is done with, but the remnants of frost qi are still present in her body. Now Chen could only eliminate the death threat, from the ice qi will have to get rid of later. Canon of the Great Secret is considered the highest perfection technique moreover, the created true qi when perfected is one of the origins of the universe. Its small amount is enough to allow Chu Bing to survive, suddenly she woke up and exclaimed that she is hot. Chen thought, I guess I overdid it a bit. She saw him and was really scared, she asked him who he is and what he did to her. Chen answered her, don't get it wrong, I was just trying to save you. She exclaimed, save? Who saves a man by pulling his clothes off? This moment mom, dad and the doctor entered the room, they were incredibly happy when they saw their daughter in good condition, mom hugged her and said, I thought I lost you forever. The doctor could not believe it, he took Chu Bing's hand said, Chen you are truly a miracle worker, the functioning of all her organs has returned to normal. Mr. Chen, you are the divine healer of our time you could give cause for alarm to the devil himself. He knelt before Chen and begged forgiveness for his unworthy behavior, Chen told him to rise, for it was not strange that he did not believe him, Chen told the doctor that apparently his healing methods were limited. The doctor said that Chen heals like a god, and if he was not angry with him then he would like to become his mentor and serve him faithfully. Chen thought that there is extremely little true qi in this world, so internal alchemy would be difficult to accomplish, it would be better to rely on creating external alchemy elixirs to increase strength, Chen handed him a sheet of ingredients and told the doctor if he could find those ingredients she would be willing to teach him a few techniques. The doctor expressed great gratitude, and promised to do his best to get everything he needed, 
although Chen did not agree to have the doctor as his assistant, but the doctor was glad that Chen would teach him a few techniques. Chu Bing wondered to her parents what was going on here and who was this person. Her parents explained everything to her in great detail. Then she got out of bed and thanked Chen for saving her life. He took her hand and said, no need to thank me, because now we are even. Father asked in surprise, even, Mr. Chen, I am Chu Tianlong, I will not forget this until death, how can you say that we are even? Chen answered him, because now her life is not in danger, now we are even, father answered him, if you say so, I will not insist, but if you need help in the future, I will do my best for you. Chen looked at Chu Bing said, in the future, watch your diet and try to keep warm don't eat cold food yet and avoid colds. She looked at him sweetly and promised to follow all his recommendations. After a while Chen left the hospital and got a call from his dad, he asked him what took him so long to pick up the phone and asked if he had seen his girlfriend Lu Chan apologized for not picking up the phone and said he had broken up with Lu, and his dad encouraged him and told him to take heart, and dad also reminded him to visit his uncle Dung and Auntie Wang because they cared for him a lot when he was just a child. Chen said he would definitely visit them. In a past life Chen never listened to daddy and insisted on being together with Lu and this is what disaster it led to, Chen was incredibly happy to hear his father's voice after 3000 years. Chen thought, in a past life I ignored my dad's nagging, but now hearing him, I really feel like to become much closer. Chen bought food and gifts for his uncles and aunts because in his past life they were very kind to him, on his way to them he saw bandits knocking furiously on the door. One of them said, Brother Ji, that broad Wang Xuejuan lives on the top floor in the 303rd apartment, remember, Wang Xuejuan has a lot of money, you must take full interest from her, otherwise you will answer to Brother Hu. Chen walked up to them and said, judging from your talk, are you planning to make trouble for my aunt? He turned to him and asked, so you're an acquaintance of hers, you've decided to go to bat for her. If you're going to get involved in this, you'd better be prepared, after all, your aunt owes us five million, if we don't get it today not only her family but you as well will be. But Chin got tired of hearing this nonsense and hit him hard, he fell into a trash box, his friends stood there in a daze. Chen told them if they leave right now, they can do it on their own too. After a while he rang the bell at his aunt's house, she opened the door and was very happy to see him, she asked him how he ended up in Jiangnan. He told her that he came to in turn and also decided to visit her and his uncle, she told him that he so rarely comes to visit the man in honor of that she will cook his favorite dishes. Uncle saw Chen and was also very happy, since he hasn't visited them for a long time. Uncle asked him how his father was doing, Chen replied that his father works in a shoe factory. Uncle said sadly, so many years passed and he is still there, you know Chen, your family is not doing well, so you should start working hard to earn more and ease your father's burden, at your age I already opened my own business in Jiangnan. Chen indifferently replied, yes. Uncle looked at him and thought, the elders are trying to share their experiences, but he does not care, with this attitude should obviously not expect much success from him. Suddenly a cute and beautiful girl approached them, she surprisingly asked, Dad, who is it? Uncle said, it's the son of Uncle Ye's former neighbor, his name is Chen and he came to Jiangnan to work. She said surprisingly, oh I don't remember anymore, she thought, because when strangers come to their home, they most often come to them to ask for help from her family. After an hour aunt set the table, they sat down for dinner and Chen said, after all these years auntie still amazing cooking, he wanted to try all the food because he hasn't eaten auntie's food in over 3000 years. Lin Xu was waiting for Chen to ask her mom and dad for something. Auntie asked Chen if he had a girlfriend, Chen said that he hasn't had time. She said, how fortunate, you may not know, but in the past your father and I have arranged a marriage between you and Lin Xu. Lin Xu stood up and asked angrily, arranged. Is this a joke, mother? Lin Xu changed her reasoning, 
Now she began to think that Chen had come to their home to meet her. Chen answered his aunt, Are you sure you are not mistaken, auntie? My father never mentioned it, auntie replied, We had originally planned to announce it when Ling Xiu received his diploma, but who knew that you would suddenly find yourself in Jiangnan, isn't that a great coincidence? Lin Xu angrily exclaimed, Mother, nowadays people choose who to love, we are not in the Middle Ages. She looked at Chen unhappily and said, You think you are a grown man, but instead of making an effort, you are going to find a wife, relying on this backward custom, are you a man after that? My aunt stood up and said, Lin Xu how do you talk to a guest, where are your manners? Lin Xu asked her mother why she was defending Chen, after which she got offended and left. At this point, uncle asked Chen to stand up as he had a private conversation with him. They went to the balcony and uncle told him, Listen, Lin Xu was right now, your family is poor, but people in your position can't afford lack of purpose you should think about making an effort and start earning rather than trying to start a family. Uncle gave him a bank card, he said, On this card is a hundred thousand, given our good relationship with your father, consider it a financial help from my side. And about that arrangement regarding the wedding with Lin Xu, forget about it. Chen answered him, Uncle Dan, you misunderstood something, if aunt hadn't told me about it, I wouldn't have any idea about this marriage, and I don't take it seriously myself. Uncle, I just arrived in Jiangnan, and I still have a lot to do, I will come and see you again when I get settled here properly, uncle answered him, you are a reasonable guy try your best to improve your family's situation, if you succeed, it's not certain that you and Ling Xiu won't have a chance. Chen was about to leave and before he left he told his aunt if she had difficulties she could call him and he would help her. My aunt wondered what he meant by that, does he know about our debt? At this time, those bandits who were beaten by Chen their ringleader came, he was extremely dissatisfied with them, he said, one unfortunate debt you can't get out, instead of wasting time on you, you better spend on raising dogs, how did this happen? He replied to him, brother who, it's really not our fault, that guy really knows how to fight, but at this point, brother hew him in a rage and ask them where the guy. Chen walked up to him and asked, are you looking for me? They began to provoke Hu's brother to beat him up, he swung at him and said that Chen was the first person in years to be so bold when meeting him. Hu punched him in the chest area with all his might, but Chen stood still without any emotion, Hu stood stunned by surprise. At that moment Chen smirked and went behind his back with incredible speed, he hit him with two fingers on the pain point and Hu's hand went numb, Hu didn't understand how he did it and no matter how he tried to move his hand, he couldn't do anything. Suddenly Chen wanted to hit him with two fingers again, but this time in his throat, from this blow who should have died, who was incredibly scared, he couldn't think that Chen would turn out to be a master, who called him a real warrior. Who was ready to die, but at the last moment Chen stopped, who wondered why he wouldn't kill me. Chen took his hand away and asked him if he was ready to have a normal conversation now that Hu said, thank you for not killing me. Mr. Warrior, your aunt's debt including interest, don't pay it back, let it be my way of apologizing to you. Chen told him, as much as we borrowed, we will pay it back, that is the principle, tell me, why did she go into debt in the first place, who answered, she said that their company was in debt and needed money to pay off debts. Chen thought, after all the blue star true chi is in great short supply, but logically the warriors don't just appear here, it is worth finding out more about it, he asked who, I have one more question, you just called me a warrior, I am not considered as such, however, I have a certain interest in them, can you tell me more about them? That time Lin Xu went out to take out the trash and saw Chen with the bandits, she thought, I can still understand his desire to become a keeper, but to make friends with street gangs, sooner or later Chen will definitely end up in prison. After a while who told everything he knows about the warriors, then he left, Hu and his bandit friends started to respect Chen greatly. Bandit friends said to brother Hu why he was being so nice to him, because these are not the times when skills are decisive, and in a pinch you can gather a couple of hundred people and teach Chen a lesson. But Hu answered them, you don't understand shit, if my guess is right, he is just like Mr. Lei. 
Mr. Lei is brother Hu's boss, and the leader of the whole underground world of Jiang Nan, the friends asked him, can Chen be put on par with Mr. Lei? According to Chuan Hu, martial artists of this world are divided into warriors of visible force, hidden force, creating force and great masters. Chen thought, as far as I have been able to understand, cultivators in the fourth stage of qi hardening are equated here with warriors of visible force. There are nine stages in the path to perfection, qi hardening, laying the foundation golden elixir, primordial spirit, dissolution of spirit, knowledge of emptiness, merging, Mahayana, distress. Although in the past I managed to reach the penultimate stage of Mahayana, now I have to start over, but thanks to experience and the canon of the great secret, the path of perfection will not present any difficulties for me. As I thought in just one hour I managed to reach the fourth stage of qi hardening, in any business the hardest part is the beginning, as soon as Dr. Ping gets the right ingredients, we can begin to create elixirs. The next day he received a call from Chu Bing, she found out from his parents that Chen had recently arrived in town and realized that he would not be comfortable renting an apartment Chen couldn't refuse and offer to meet her so that he could take his frosty qi out of her body. After a while he came to her address, he was surprised to see a luxurious apartment, Chu Bing asked him when he would take his frosty qi out of her body, Chen answered her, you can do it now, you'll need to get undressed. She started her shirt and embarrassedly replied, get undressed here, right now. Need to get completely undressed. He answered her, what are you just thinking, same as that time, but still come inside to start. They entered the house and Chu Bing unbuttoned her shirt, Chen began to liquefy the frosty. Chi, after a few minutes he finished and she handed him an envelope with an invitation she said that tomorrow night her father was holding a banquet at the Palace of the Full Moon, and they hoped that Chen would be able. In the evening Chen went out on the balcony and thought that this place was quite nice the top of the mountain and the spirituality of the Chi abounds here. But suddenly he saw something strange going on in the house next door, he saw some girl being held by two guys in suits and behind them was a man with a camera, looking closely he recognized that girl saw her this afternoon when he first came to this house and talked to Chu Bin. At this time to her the man put her on the bed and said, eh, neen, and why don't you appreciate the kind attitude, you make me use force. I can't even count how many stars above you have slept with Mayo kept playing hard to get. His assistants came up to him and told him, Supervisor Fong, when you're done having fun with her, let us have some fun with her too, Fong laughed and let them. He told them, now hurry up and set up the camera let's see if she dares to disobey when I have her hot pictures on my hands. One of the assistants wanted to close the curtains and saw Chen watching intently, he turned to Fong and said, Leader, there is someone there he saw us. Fong got scared and told them to grab him and bring him to him, after all you have to pay for his silence. But at the last moment he said, no, it would be better to just kill him, when the job is done, I will pay you a million each to lay low until things settle down. The aide replied, okay, we'll do as you say. But at that moment Chen broke the window and got into their room, he told them, you got the girl drunk and now you decide to go in for the kill, I don't know if you can go any lower, really thought I couldn't hear anything. They stood in a stupor and didn't understand how he got here, Fong said no one should know about today, and ordered his assistants to silence Chen. They took out knives and wanted to attack him all at once, but he kicked the broken glass and killed all his assistants, Fong was left alone, he was very scared. Chen came up to him and said, it's your turn, I understand you are the instigator. Fong fell to the floor in fear and begged not to kill him, he said there were serious people behind him, and if he killed him, Chen would be in serious trouble. But Chen got tired of hearing all this nonsense, he kicked him and Fong flew several meters away, he hit a wall and died. Chen stood in the room and wondered what I would do now with the bodies and the scene itself if I deal with everything, later it will turn into problems. Suddenly that girl woke up, she saw Chen and was scared of him, she asked him who he was and what he was doing in her house, he said, it was you bastard, 
took advantage of the fact that I was drunk and followed me home to take advantage of me, I will call the police. Chen hit her in and she lost consciousness because if she saw more dead bodies, it would be too difficult to explain everything. Chen called Hu and said, I have a difficult situation, need your help, come to the Waluan Manor. After a while they helped him and finished cleaning up all traces of crime. After 20 minutes the girl woke up again, she had severe headaches, Chen told her. She cried out to him, you couldn't have saved me, obviously it was you who was following me, you plotted against me. He turned away from her and said believe me or not it's up to you. She thought he was being too indifferent, maybe I really was wrong. Where has leader Fong gone, I remember how he insisted on seeing me off, was it leader Fong who got me drunk? She remembered that she had a hidden camera in her room, maybe she managed to film something. She started to watch the surveillance video and was shocked, she thought, so it was Supervisor Fong, a complete bastard, she saw Chen save her and how he killed all of Feng's assistants and then Fong himself. She was shocked by what she saw, she couldn't that a man could do such a thing. At night Chen returned home, he began to meditate, because the abundance of spiritualized qi is just fine, if he had stayed where he was, he would only be able to reinforce the stage after 10 days. When he can make elixirs then in conjunction with the qi absorption formation, he will be able to quickly complete the purification of the body and reach the final stage. In his past life, he failed to reach the stage of distress, not counting the incipient in his soul, one of the reasons for the failure was his excessive haste growing too fast leads to an unstable foundation. In this life he must necessarily prepare the foundation. Suddenly that neighbor he saved knocked on his door, he opened it, she told him, it is raining hard outside and thundering, in addition a recent accident, now I am very scared, can I sleep at your place tonight? He laughed at her and asked her if she was afraid to stay at his house, she said to him, I've seen the surveillance video, tomorrow I have more shooting, I'll leave early in the morning and won't bother you long. Chen allowed her to enter his house. She said, I first found myself in the first cottage, Chu family used it to host important guests and never agreed to sell it to anyone, I didn't think that the person who eventually managed to buy it would be you. Chen answered her, I didn't buy it I helped the Chu family in some way, and in gratitude they offered to let me live here. If you're going to sleep here refrain from making noise, she said she wouldn't make a sound. They lay down on the bed and after a while Chen fell asleep, being close to him she felt an inexplicable sense of calm. She told him, I was wrong about you, I'm sorry, Chen replied, it's alright, go to sleep. But she couldn't sleep and asked him a question, are you a hit man, judging by the way you move you must have had some kind of training, tell me how you managed to fly such a distance, it was incredible, Chen knew that he wouldn't be able to sleep tonight. She told him, just like that you fell asleep, assassins are so inconsiderate, she was furious and thought, isn't he attracted to me at all? The next morning Chen woke up and saw that his roommate had already left, he also had to get ready to go to work where he was interning. He got dressed and saw that she had made him breakfast, she also left him a note with a thank you and a phone number, she had written to him that he could call her anytime with any questions. After a while he went to work at the Jiajian Food Company. A girl greeted him and said, here is the planning department, this is where you will do your internship. His ex-girlfriend Lu worked at this company, her friends saw that Chen had joined this company and were discussing him, they were extremely unhappy that he hit Lu because now she walks around with a bandaged face. A friend came up to Lu and told her that she always told her to break up with Chen because he has no money and no connections and now he is also hitting her, she began to praise her new boyfriend who gave her a ride in a new car, his father is in the top management of the city department, a friend told her that Hao is well-mannered and educated. But Lu said, don't say that Gu Ping, Hao and I are just friends. Gu Ping said, Hao Chen had the nerve to come here, now I'll tell him everything. She went up to him and told him that a loser like him, it was very lucky for him to date Lu, but he did not appreciate her and besides he started hitting her. She told him, do you even see yourself, 
you think you deserve her? Chen answered her, are you so stupid and brainless, why didn't you realize that she brazenly lied to you, Chen thought to himself, it seems that before I had time to take over, Lu had already created an image of an unhappy victim. Suddenly Lu cried and said, okay you beat me and waste my money, but why on your first day of work that I had worked so hard to find you, you immediately insult my friends. At this point, the director of the planning department came in, his name is Wen Kuen, he angrily asked them what the reason they all gathered in one place, he said, you have nothing to do. He came up to Lu and asked what's the matter, why are you crying? What happened to your face, said there's nothing wrong with her. But Gi Ping came up to him and said she had been hit by Chen, he was so surprised and he couldn't believe it.